Win big with new DRF All Access Pass Performances. With one best in class product, you now get all three pass performance formats. Go to drf.com and use coupon code 1FREEPP for a free single card today. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for hanging out with us here on the Daily Racing Form YouTube. I am Gino alongside David Aragona as we are set for a preview of race number 10 on Saturday at Belmont at the Big A. It's the grade two mother goose for three-year-old fillies going a mile and an eighth. It's also a very important week in the world of horse racing. We're just about eight days out from the Breeders' Cup as we record this one on uh, Thursday, uh, a week ahead of schedule. And the Breeders' Cup pre-entries are already out. Make sure to take advantage of all the time that you have to handicap those Breeders' cup races and subscribe to our channel because we're going to do our best to help you out we want to make sure that you are all set as prepared as possible to make some money next week in those 14 championship races on breeders cup friday and saturday let's focus on the task at hand david it's the grade two mother goose as we meet the field for this one uh we have Tarifa, who was actually the morning line favorite in the Kentucky Oaks earlier this year. I think she ended up going off as the third choice in that race, but she was highly regarded and one of the better three-year-olds early in the season. Torpedo Anna has kind of taken that mantle from her in the second half of the season, no doubt. But Tarifa will be interesting as she's kind of rounding back into form, making her third start off the bench. But Gunsong was very good and almost upset torpedo and a last time we saw her so you've made those two kind of the strong top two betting choices in here yeah, I think both Tarifa and Gunslong and their connections will be happy to see Thorpedo and uh, awaiting that Breeders' Cup matchup with Idiomatic that I think we're all looking forward to the following weekend. But these two Phillies, they both ran respectively behind that presumptive champion last time, especially Gunsong, who gave her all she could handle in that cotillion. And I think that makes her um, a pretty deserving favorite in this Mother Goose. And as we take a look at the Timeform US pace projector, what makes her even more tough is it doesn't seem like there's that much early speed in here she just seems to be naturally quicker than almost everyone in here maybe headline uh numbers who is second showed a little bit of positional speed in that second start but the body of work overall we've just seen a lot more speed from gunsong than we have from these others yeah, and Gunsong has been successful going to the front in the past. She went gate to wire two back in the Catherine Sophia, was right on top of the pace every step of the way in the Cotillion, and she really has shown that she's a fighter. She's very game to the stretch of her races, so she's not going to be an easy one to pass, especially given this likely pace setup. Uh, let's take a look at the field here for the Mother Goose. We'll start from the inside with Dorothy's Dream. Uh, she's won two in a row now, and she's done the body of her work at Finger Lake. She has three wins over there. Uh, she's in nice form, so they will step up. Her She did actually break her maiden at Aqueduct back in January, but since then, she just really hasn't run any speed figures like on the buyer scale or anything that are close enough. Can you follow Dorothy down the yellow brick road here, David? <laughs> There's really no standout in this race, so I kind of get the connections taking a shot to maybe pick up a piece here, get some black type, but uh, she's a little tough to make a case for based on her recent form and the competition that she's faced. It's just a huge step up in class. Call Another Play is a stakes winner who's grade two placed. Finished behind Gunsong uh, in the Black Eyed Susan earlier this year. Tried turf last time out in the Virginia Oaks. Just felt like they were kind of taking a swing for something there. Uh, so her form is a little bit murky coming in. What do you think about Call Another Play and how she stacks up here? Yeah, she didn't run that badly behind Gunsong in the Black Eyed Susan picking up third that day. Since then, her buyers have kind of been on a steady decline, but she was on the turf last time. That's not the right service for her. I wish I had seen a little bit more from her in that off the turf race two back at Laurel, where it seemed like she was meeting the right field and she just had no answer for Ronan Goddess, who wouldn't exactly be considered one of the major players in here. So she's got to step it up a little bit. Tarifa, number three, is a multiple graded stakes winner. She had some big races earlier on in the year, and then she was off from May to August. She showed back up in August, and it was a race where she drew the inside in a smaller field. That was a pretty good prep race. She had to deal with some pressure in there to the inside, and it set her up for a good effort in the Cotillion. I liked her a little bit in that last race. I thought that was going to be her spot in the Cotillion, second start off the bench. Now she'll make her third start of the form cycle, David, and she probably has one of the higher ceilings in here she just may not be as quick early on as gunsong and some of the others that could be the difference between winning and losing in this race yeah, I wish I saw a little bit more finish from her last time in that cotillion because she got there. She was right there with Gunsong at the top of the stretch and just couldn't really go on with that foe as Gunsong sort of battled 
back to go with Torpedo Anna Layden. Tarifa just kind of gave it up in the late stages. I mean, she still ran fine. She finished third in a grade one that day, um, but she also disappointed in her race off the layoff two back. And you start to pick apart some of her races earlier in the season. And she looked impressive in those races, but some of the competition that she was beating up on hasn't necessarily flattered that form since then or proven to be among the best three-year-old fillies in this crop. So I wonder if she's really gone on from that point in time. She's been a tough horse sometimes to ride and just sometimes to relax all the way through too. That's why I have some concerns about a mile and an eighth. She was keeping Torpedo Anna pinned in and then at the top of the lane, she just couldn't go on with the top two. Just, just didn't have it. And like you said, she was in a perfect spot, had every opportunity there and just wasn't quite good enough to go on with the best in, in that last race. Pretty Anna is actually the half sibling to Gunrunner. So this horse is beautifully bred for the turf, but she's actually done... Uh, for the dirt, she's actually done a little bit better work on the turf most recently. She was a third place uh, finisher on September the 20th. They're going to return to the dirt for her third start for the barn. And now you can understand why they want to keep getting her long on the dirt, keep giving her opportunities to see if she can live up to some of that breeding. Yeah, I mean, I suppose you could say that maybe she improved on the turf for Chad Brown, or maybe she just improved overall for Chad Brown. Yeah. And she's going to be able to translate that form from the turf to the dirt. Because as you said, it's not like she really has much turf pedigree at all, aside from being by quality road, who is a nice turf sire. Um, even if she runs those turf races on the dirt here, I think she would still have to take another step forward because she's just never really run a race that puts her in the mix here. And you kind of understand why they're taking a shot in the graded stakes, having a pedigree like that. If she can get some black type, suddenly she becomes a lot more valuable. Well, Gunsong almost defeated Torpedo Anna last time out. Uh, definitely no Torpedo Anna's in here. So just on paper from the talent ability, the ceiling we've seen, the pace shape, all of that major positives. I guess the only question I would ask you or maybe the concern I would have is coming off of a big race like this, like a career best effort where she was fighting and having to deal with a really nice horse like Torpedo Anna. Sometimes that could take a little bit out of a horse, but we don't have a quick turnaround. They've given this horse more than a month now to relax. So even my knocks aren't that much of a knock because she does have a really nice second place effort that we just saw there to Torpedo Anna. Yeah, I mean, I kind of get the argument that maybe she was a last time as the time horse because she was 44 to one against Torpedo Anna and almost pulled off a shocking upset. And now she's going to be an extremely short price. Um, but she could even regress a little bit off that cotillion performance and arguably still beat this field because there's just nobody in here that's run particularly fast. And I personally have some questions about Tarifa running back to her better races from this spring. And it just makes Gunsong a clear horse to beat. We took a look at that pace projector. She's supposed to get a very comfortable trip, setting her own pace towards the front end. And it's not like that cotillion improvement came out of nowhere because she's been a good horse for a while now. She ran a nice speed figure to win the Black Eyed Susan, albeit against weaker, but she even put in a good performance against some nice horses in the Catherine Sophia two back. She just seems like she's really improved recently for Mark Hennig, and she seems to find a pretty good spot in this uh, Mother Goose. Well, you talked about Gunsong being the horse to bet uh, to beat. I actually think that this next horse might be the one to bet if you're maybe looking for a little bit of value in this race, and that's Life Talk, because she was a grade two winner over this track at a mile and an eighth, and last year, after the Demoiselle you had to like have her on the short list of top three-year-old fillies, uh, the fillies in her division. She was only fourth in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Fillies. And then after that, she has that grade two win. But her first two races in 2024 were so disappointing, just didn't really fire at all. If you can eliminate those races, the both of them, and just kind of play her off of her last effort where she got back into form. I thought it was a pretty good effort for second. She just seems like the wild card in here to me, David, in a race where Gunsong and Tarifa feel like the two. Probably not that exciting if you're looking for a horse to bet. This horse might present some value and I think still has some sneaky ability. Yeah, I see where we're going with her. I kind of had some mixed feelings about her because on one hand, I thought her dem was at the end of last year was really dressed up by a track bias. Remember, that was the same day that ran the Cigar Mile and the Remsen. It was a big speed bias at Aqueduct, and she took full advantage of that going gate to wire, setting a slow pace. And I wasn't totally surprised when she didn't go on as a three-year-old early in the year, but those performances still seemed almost too bad to be true. And they put her away, gave her time. And if I just take her last race in isolation in that Seneca at Churchill Downs, 
I do think there are some things to like. She kind of found her best stride at the end of that race, was finishing well. She handles the mile in eighth distance. Um, so if I just take that race in isolation and now view her as second off a layoff with that performance under her belt, I can see her as a contender in here. I still don't know if I want to take her on top, just having those prior uh, feelings about her from the end of last season. The number seven headline numbers is lightly raced with some upside comes off of uh, an effort where actually she finished second. She was put up to first via the DQ. She had a fast start. She was sitting just off in the two path at the top of the lane. She loomed up, but she really wasn't a horse who was impacted by what happened, right? The horse to her inside camera cut off a horse on the rail and that's what caused the disqualification. So um, how do you feel about horses like this who kind of get put up and are able to benefit that and did she hang a little bit when she seemed like she had every opportunity here yeah i don't know why i'm putting myself through watching this replay again because this was a painful <laughs> one for me like in yeah. camera quite a bit in this race it's a little controversial that she was taken down uh, but as you said headlight numbers she was never winning that race i mean she had every chance was, she was probably her best right and arguably was the one that actually started that chain reaction at the top of the stretch shifting in a little bit um her debut was visually impressive when she won off by 11 lengths. And, you know, she got some buzz that day as maybe a future stakes horse for Chad Brown. But you look back at that field and you kind of understand why she won by 11 lengths. There was nothing else behind her that day. And she came back in that allowance race and just didn't improve at all, arguably regressed a little bit. So I just think she's going to have to get a little better. And she's facing much tougher company than she did last time. So she's going to take some money for Chad Brown and Irad. She's lost to prove some things to me. Yeah, that's the key. I just feel like whatever her price is, it's just going to be a little shorter than I would like to play on her. We round out the field with Just Music, who will face Stakes Company for the first time. And just on the speed figures, she has to get a lot faster to compete with this group. Do you think Just Music uh, has an opportunity in here to hit the board or to get the job done? Yeah, I mean, one reason that I'm a little skeptical of headline numbers is she could not even get by camera last time. And the same thing for Just Music. She was competing against camera in her last race and couldn't quite get by or beaten by a similar margin, camera second and Just Music third. So if you like headline numbers, I think you're supposed to be taking a long look at Just Music at a much bigger price. I'm not a big fan of either of them. Just Music has had a lot of chances at this distance against weaker company and just doesn't really run fast enough to be considered a player here. Let's take a look at these selections for this one, David. Uh, you're going to lean towards Gunsong, who is hands down the one they'll all have to catch and beat in here. Yeah, I tried and tried to look beyond her. I gave a long look to the horse that you put on top, Life Talk. I just couldn't quite pull the trigger with her. And I just think Gunsong might be the best horse in the race and is going to get the right trip for her. Yeah, definitely think Gunsong and Tarifa. Those are the two in here. Gunsong will have a little more speed. Maybe Tarifa, third off the form cycle, has one more step forward. But if you're looking for some value, I thought it might be there with Life Talk, who can hopefully get back to some of those earlier races and does have form over this track going a mile and an eighth. Maybe that could be the difference late in this race. So uh, I'll look for a little more value in this one. However, you're playing Belmont at the Big A on Saturday. We wish you the best of luck. Hey, buddy, you look like you're in need of a winner. And just remember, if you like and subscribe right over here, you can get all of the great content on DRF.com, including Race of the Day, Stakes Previews, and lots more featuring me and my superb selections. I trust me, you're not going to regret it.